What is going on everybody? So in this video we are going to be talking about a very interesting concept and that is combining a front end system app builder like Bubble with a, a mobile app builder like Adalo. Now in Adalo you can also build uh, web apps as well but mostly Adalo really shines when it comes to web apps, right? And so here's Adalo, this is a simple app very very easy to build and so let me explain to you the motivation behind this and why i think this is really cool and really useful so this is the regular flow you have a user they go to a place like bubble.io maybe they are consuming a made app and they're using it and that app has an internal database so something like bubble is gonna have an internal database. And that's nice, that's really cool and all. And the same thing with Adalo, right? So Adalo is, uh, is also an app builder. You can build a mobile app as well. You can also build web apps. And Adalo also has an internal database. But there is also a variation of that, is that you can also, you can also use Adalo as a mobile app backed by Bubble. So instead of having internal database with Adalo, you can actually have all your data in Bubble. So for instance, let's say you build an app and it's using and it has all this data built in, but you want to expose that data to Adalo. And that is actually fairly easy to do. And this is what, and this is something we're gonna be covering in today's video. So instead of having something like this, we are gonna have something like this, all right? And so to start with, I'm going to go into my bubble dashboard and we are going to create a sample database. We don't even have to create an app. We have to create a database and we have to expose it. And then we're going to go back to Adalo and we're going to create a fully functioning app that's using the data that's stored in bubble via the REST API. All right, so here I am in Bubble and I am, you know, I have a blank app here. I don't have anything built. And so if we go into data, I don't have anything in data. And so let's say we're building some kind of an app, uh, maybe some kind of a movie database. Okay, so we're going to have movies and we're going to have actors and we're going to have maybe some other data as well. And then, you know, maybe we're going to have a Bubble app. And also we're gonna have an Adalo app that's gonna be using the data here. And that way you're not duplicating any data, which I think is really great. And so let's say we we're gonna create a movie data type and we are gonna have the name of this movie. It's gonna be text. And we're gonna have maybe date released, a uh, year released. This is gonna be a number. And we are also going to have actors. So actors, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to make it a text. I'm going to make it uh, capital actors. Uh, it's going to be a multiple entries text. And let's see. So we have release name and maybe star rating or something like that. Our uh, rating out of 10. Okay. So it could be a number, uh, something out of 10, 9 out of 10, 8 out of 10, something like this. And so this is a nice start. We have actors that played in that movie. We have a name, uh, which is the name of the movie. We have the rating of the movie. We have the released year, uh, the year that the movie was released. And so we have a record here. And this is actually a collection that you can use easily in Bubble. Okay, and so let's add some sample data in there. And so let's do that. And so here I'm on the data screen. We're going to go into movies and there's nothing in there. So let's add a couple of movies. Uh, just to test it out. So the first movie is going to be, let's say it's going to be Rambo. And you had um, Sylvester Stallone playing there. So we're going to put Sylvester. And let's say also Arnold. Arnold Schwarzenegger played there as well. Okay. And maybe, okay, so we have two actors and maybe another actor, actor three. Okay. And so actually, let's let's think of an actor, maybe uh, Keanu, Keanu Reeves. OK, so it's a star studded cast there. And this was released. I don't remember when it was released, 1985 or something, uh, depending on the Rambo. And this is obviously nine out of ten. And the slog, we don't really have to worry about the slog. The slogs are typically when you are creating websites, web pages, but you can call it Rambo. OK. And so now we created one record with three actors. We have our name Rambo. We have a rating nine. 
And so this is beginning like as though we're building a regular uh, bubble app, right? We can go out to the design, start dragging our repeating components and all that and do everything that you need to do. But we're not going to be building a bubble app. We're actually going to be building an Adalo app using the data here in this bubble app. So the first thing you have to do is you have to go into settings and you have to enable the data API. You're probably not going to have it enabled. You have to enable it. You're going to get this privacy warning and it's going to send you to another tab. So you have to go back. And you want to make sure that it's checked on the, the data types, the, the datas that you want to use. Okay, so we're going to have all this check. We also have an API token that's for modifying data. And I don't know if we're going to be modifying data today. We can, but I think in this video, we're simply going to be displaying the data uh, just to see how, how to connect it together. And also we can modify it later on as well. So we have a token. We don't really need the token here. So we have a movie and we have a user. Now, if you go into Bubble and you go to their uh, bubble.io forward slash reference and you search, there's a lot of API reference, right? There's a big, so you, you go down, you click on API and you have a lot of API references and you can send data, you can, uh, there's all kinds of information, workflow APIs. And so there's a lot of things that you can do. What you're looking for is you're looking at this data API. The data API allows one click creation of RESTful interface to some or all of your application data, right? And this is really good. And it gives you kind of um, a pattern, uh, the URL patterns uh, that you're gonna be sending the request. So it's gonna have your app name here and it's gonna have your type name here, okay? And so if you have a, a custom domain, you're gonna be using this obviously but you can also be used, you can also use something like this. And so for instance, if you have a rental unit, it's gonna look like rental unit because uh, you have to remove all the spaces and you have to use only lowercase letters. And so for instance, let's say we have our uh, movie database 2020, that's the name of the app that we created. And we have all of this here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try the sample request by putting in the, the data type, okay? So we have our the name of our app and the type of the data that we're sending. So if I issue that request, guess what? We have a valid response, we have results, and we have actors, three actors, which is an array of strings. We have a name, we have all of this, and that's perfect. We also have a user, so I can also uh, issue uh, a request for uh, on the user field and I'm gonna get my user uh, user records here. And in this case, we only have one user. And so I'm gonna go back to the movie field. And so we have a nice result here and we can do all kinds of interesting things here. And so now that it works, another good thing that you wanna do is you wanna use a tool like Postman. And this is something I'm gonna be covering later on. And this is a great tool because it allows you to test APIs a lot easier. So for instance, I enter my entire URL and I can click send and I have a valid response here. We have response. It's kind of the same thing on the browser, except I can easily modify. So for instance, I can enter a movie ID. So another thing that you can do is you can copy this movie ID here. And let's say you only want results for a specific data type, right? So in this case, you're going to go back to here and you are going to do the following. You're going to put a colon movie Okay, actually you're gonna do this, ID, and that, and automatically this system is gonna be expecting an ID. So if I copy and paste this ID, I paste it here, we should get a response just for that movie. And this is also important to know because uh, you wanna understand all the, all the various responses that you're gonna be getting, not just you know all the responses. You also wanna get responses by a specific ID. So if I issue this, this um, response by that specific ID, this one, I actually get a response, okay? And so this is fantastic, this works perfectly. Now we tested uh, all, the, all, the, all the, the entire collection and we also tested uh, the specific response. And this makes it really e easy with this tool because the only thing I have to do is uh, enter colon ID and it creates this path variable that all I have to do is replace it and it's gonna send that response. But that is something I might be talking about in some of the future videos, how to use this tool. All right, so now that we have the right response, so if I go to movie, I get all my movies. In this case, I only get one movie, right? Count is one. 
we can go to Adalo and create a sample app and I will show you how to actually display that data correctly and how to configure that data in Adalo, okay? And so what you wanna do is you wanna go in here, you wanna create a new app, we're gonna create a mobile app. Uh, template is blank, not really a big deal, and I'm just gonna call it Movie Database, okay? Because we are building a movie database after all. And it's gonna create a kind of scaffolding right now. So I don't really care too much about uh, authentication right now, so we can delete that. The only thing I really care about is making sure the app is getting the data properly. And so what you wanna do is you wanna add a one screen here, right? So if we go to all screens, we only have one screen. And then what you wanna do is you wanna add a simple list just to see if we're getting the right data. So I drag the simple list. Now, it's asking me, what is this list of? If I select it, we only have the user's collection. That is because we haven't configured this external collection just yet. So in order to do that, you just go to the database here and you click on, you can connect to API. So you can click on add connection. And so just to show you, just to be clear, we have our internal database. We have users here, okay? We have one collection, but we also have an external collection. And in this case, we don't have any external collections because we haven't configured it yet. So you need to click on add collection and you need to call it something. So if I type movie, now I have a collection called movie. Now it needs an API base URL. And what that is, is actually, this is this link right here. So if you copy this, uh, what you got, what, what Bubble told you, and you go back here, the base is gonna be exactly this, right? So it's gonna be your entire link and just the name of the type, okay? And you can also configure auth parameters uh, if you're doing authentication. This is gonna be important if you're actually modifying data. In our case, uh, we don't have any authentication, so anybody can send a request and get data uh, for these records, okay? So we're gonna click on next. And now it's showing you all the different um, type of request it's gonna be making depending on what we're trying to do. So if you wanna update a record, it's gonna send an update request. This is gonna be this put request. If you wanna create a new record, it's gonna create a new request. For deleting, it's gonna delete. Uh, for get one record, it's gonna send that ID. And that is why it's important for you to test using this tool, right? It's very important because I can just enter ID and test with different values. And so as you can see, this is important, but we're only interested in get all, okay? So we click on get all, we have our URL, this is correct. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna click on done just to check and you click on next and now you can do an API uh, test. You're gonna run test, but when you do that, you're gonna get an error, okay? And so this is very important. A lot of people are gonna get confused. And why are we getting an error? We are getting the correct response. This is exactly what I got in my browser here. And so we're getting the right thing. So why is it complaining? It's complaining because it needs to know where exactly is the result. So as you can see, we have a response with a bunch of fields. We have response here, and that is what's called an object. So all of this is called a JSON, okay? This is a JSON format. Uh, and so you have an object. So you have a response object, and this response object has a cursor uh, with a value of zero, and it has a results object, uh, actually a results array with all of this. So this could be, this will be multiple, multiple of this if you have multiple movies. And then it also has a bunch of other um, attribute key value pairs, these are called. And so what you need to do is you need to tell Adalo that you're looking for response and results. You're really looking for results. But in Adalo's language, you need to tell it, hey, go to response and then go to results. So we're gonna go back, we're gonna click on get all, and we are gonna enter the results keys. The first is gonna be response, and the second key is gonna be results, okay? And that way it can find that array of data that it needs in order to populate the views. So we're gonna click on done, we're gonna click on next, we're gonna run test, and now test is successful because it knows where the list is. Remember, this specific API call is looking for an array, it's looking for a list because it's gonna be populating uh, things like lists, uh, list, uh, list components and stuff like that. 
So we're gonna create this uh, collection and now we have two collections. We have this built-in users collection and we have an external collection. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this list and we're gonna say, this is a movie now, okay? And it's gonna populate it uh, using the data from that API request that we got from Bubble. And so we need to set it up, first of all, we're gonna go to title, it's not gonna be a movie ID, we're gonna click on this and we are gonna set the name. And now it's gonna show the name. And for the subtitle, you can do kind of anything you wanna do. Maybe it could have a little bit of a description about the movie back in your Bubbles database, or maybe it's going to you know, be something else. In this case, we're just gonna list the actors. So we're gonna click on this and we're gonna click on actors. And it's gonna list the actors there. And you can also have a left section. You can enable it. You can have an avatar, you can have an icon. Uh, it could be an icon for the movie. Uh, lots of interesting things, maybe this icon color, the right section is going to have the actual uh, something else, right? Some kind of um, action, uh, something that if you click on it, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do something. You can also configure a background as well. Lots of interesting things. But before we go further, let's test it out and make sure it's doing what it needs to be doing. So we're going to click on preview. And we are gonna take a look at the results. So it's actually executing this request to get the data and hopefully it's gonna show, show the data correctly. And so as you can see, we have the movie Rambo and we have Sylvester. It's actually displaying just the first result here. And this is absolutely fine because when we create a list view and we actually create a list of uh, various actors. So for instance, let's say I want to go ahead and I wanna create a new screen and this is going to be a screen like this, right? This is gonna be a movie detail screen. So I'm just gonna call it movie details, something like this. And if they click on the movie, it's gonna list the actors. So maybe you're gonna have some images, names, things like that. And in this case, all you have to do is, you're gonna select this and you're gonna say, what is this a list of? And you're gonna say movie. And what you have to do is you have to connect them, right? So you see this action here, we're gonna add an action and we're gonna link it to this movie details, okay? And we're gonna, uh, current movie, we're gonna pass current movie, we are gonna do a transition uh, slide left perhaps, we're gonna do this. And then when we go in here, we can actually create, uh, we can actually show the correct stuff here, right? This list is gonna be correctly uh, set up now. And now all you have to do is configure it like you usually do, so for instance, we are gonna say this is a movie simply because we are we linked it to this movie and then you can configure the individual field. So list header, you're gonna click on this and you're gonna say current movie name. Uh, the title could be maybe the actors here, so we're gonna delete this and we're gonna say actors here, movie actors. And then when we preview it, we're gonna have a list page and we're gonna have a detail page that we've gotten from Bubble. And so if you preview it and you click on the movie, you're gonna go to the detail screen. You're gonna have the name of the movie. You can also list it here, maybe an image. And as you can see, it's actually displaying the first actor. And so it looks like the data is getting from Bubble, that array of different actors, it's only picking up one. And it looks like the best way to go about it is when you go into Bubble, to not do it as a list. You can actually do it as a, um, basically a string of names separated by comma, and then you can process it here. Because from my understanding, it doesn't seem like it understands that this is actually a list of actors. But this is actually a small issue. The most important thing is that we're actually getting data. So all we have to do is set it up once here in Bubble. We can just go in here and data, set it up once, we can build an app and then later on, we can go ahead and build a, a new app, a Dalo app, using the data that we have in Bubble. And we can also modify this data, we can delete it, uh, we can change some fields, we can do, we can create new, uh, new fields, we can do a lot of interesting things. And so that is all that I wanted to cover in this video. I really hope you've gotten value here. This is something I wasn't aware of until just recently. And so hopefully this is something that you're gonna be putting into practice when you're gonna be building your new app. And so this is it for me. Like and subscribe. Leave a comment below with any questions or suggestions you may have. Like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video.